a Boltzmann distribution. The Boltzmann distribution shows the distribution of energies of different molecules within a sample, normally, normally a sample of gas. So, for example, if we have a look here at this graph, this is what a Boltzmann distribution looks like. So, along the y axis, you've got the number of molecules, along the x is the energy of those molecules. One point, a few points to notice one is that it always starts at zero, zero, because no molecules have zero energy. If you look at this end, it'll taper off and it will never actually hit the x axis, because there's no maximum or limiting energy that a molecule can, have, molecule can have. So there's no maximum energy a molecule can have, so it never actually touches the x axis. Here, the majority of the molecules have an energy around here, sort of an average amount. Some molecules have very low energy, some molecules have very high energy. Okay? So maximum distribution shows a distribution of the energies of, of molecules in a sample. So here we've marked on activation energy. So this line here represents the um, minimum, minimum energy required in order to react. So molecules in this section here would react, ones in this section here wouldn't. Okay? Because the molecules here have energy greater than activation energy, so they will react. Right, so we can look at how different conditions can affect these distributions. So let's look at temperature. So this was our original graph, and then we've drawn one at a higher temperature here. So the effect of temperature, to appreciate, is that now there's an increase in the number of molecules with energy above the activation energy. So activation energy is in the same place, but more molecules, because the number of molecules is the area under the graph, more molecules have energy greater than the activation energy. Because the total number of molecules is the same, when we heat something, we don't have more molecules, the total number is the same. Because more of it, because the graph is kind of spread out more to the right, its peak here is lower than this one here. If it was the same height, we'd have more molecules overall, which can't occur just because we've heated something. Okay? So it's all kind of slumped and shifted to the right. So the higher temperature will always have a lower peak. Um, but overall at this end, the important, this is the important end, there's a greater amount of molecules of energy higher than the activation energy. So what effect does that have? So molecules are moving faster, so there's more frequent collisions. So let's go back to your collision theory. Higher proportion of molecules have an energy that is greater than the activation energy. Okay? That's what's represented by this area of the graph here. Because of this, there's more frequent successful collisions, so there's a faster rate of reaction. So for a reaction to happen, there has to be a successful collision. It will be successful if the molecules have energy higher than the activation energy. Okay, if we have a look at the effect of a catalyst. So, same graph, but we've just got a new line now, EC, which is the activation energy uh, when we have a catalyst. As you can see, that's further to the left on the x-axis. The, uh, axis, so that means then that this section here are molecules which now can react, when before they couldn't, only these ones here could react. So we've got a higher proportion of molecules which have an energy that is greater than the activation energy, which again means more frequent successful collisions, so it's a faster rate of reaction.